In a previous episode, we looked at very basic load testing with artillery. Today, let's mash on doing some scripting with artillery. Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the ASP Net Monsters. On uh, today's episode, we're going to delve into some more advanced use cases with artillery. Yeah, and we'll link to the previous show here in the notes. But just as a quick recap, we used artillery, which is a, a command line uh, tool here to do just basic load testing on an app that I have run, running locally, where we could do things like tell it just go hit this URL and simulate you know, 10 users uh, over a period of time, uh, which is great for just really simple testing. But of course, real world scenarios are usually a little more complicated. So today we're going to look at uh, how we can define a load testing script using artillery. So we're going to do that using code, our editor of choice. And even though you already have Visual Studio up in the background? Yes, even though I do. Well, my app is running in Visual Studio. I'm just going to You're like watch me. That. I just use code for random things as well. <laughs> Definitely anything that's like client side. I use mm -hmm. code for. And the main reason I want to use it here, I'm going to create a new file called webtest.yaml. I believe that's pronounced YAML. YAML. Okay. Uh, I always what I'm pushing figured for. I would probably get that wrong. <laughs> so using using Visual Studio Code here because it is a good editor for the YAML file format. Uh, but if what we're trying to do here is just create a test or a, a script file that uh, defines what we want our test to do. So there's a few sections to this. There's a config first. And within the config, we tell it the target that we want to hit. So what's our URL? That's going to be this one here. And the next thing that we do is we define different phases of our test. So the typical thing that you might have in a load test is a warm up phase. Uh, where you just send some initial amount of load to the site to to uh, make sure that everything's kind of loaded up in memory and that you're not you're not measuring the performance cost of just things spinning up initially. So uh, we give that a duration of 10 seconds. And the other thing that you specify is an arrival rate. So that's how many new users per second are we're going to simulate arriving to the site. So we're going to say run for 10 seconds, simulate five new users showing up every every second. And then we'll do a second phase here that's our actual test. I'm not very good at naming these phases, as you can tell. We're going to run that for 30 seconds with an arrival rate, arrival rage. That's what happens if the performance is bad. It's like an airline. Yeah. yeah. Uh, another part to this uh, script file here is the defaults, where this is where we can specify things like headers. So if we had like an API key, for example, that we needed, that's cool. We could do that here, and we can actually reference things like environment variables. So we could do things like process environment dot service API key. But I don't have one of those, so that's fine. I'm just going to skip that section. Uh, the next thing we do then is after the config, we define our scenarios. So you can have multiple scenarios. I'm only going to have one in my case, but uh, this is going to be a scenario that I call my typical flow that a user goes through my app. And within that, then we define what that flow is. And a flow is just a set of actions that happen. So that could be a get request, a post request, and that's a pretty simple example here. I'm going to go to one URL, uh, which is my main page. And then the next thing I'm going to do is think for one second. So the user is going to sit there for one second. Make sure I get the syntax right here. And then the next one is going to be that they go for some reason to the privacy page that no one ever really goes to. But that's my yeah. flow. Okay, that looks fun. So Does your URL lines need to be indented? I'm never sure with YAML. Uh, yes, you're right, and I am never sure either. I'm uh, not good at YAMLing, whatever the verb is for writing these things. 
Okay, so one of the things you can do with scenarios, if you have multiple scenarios, is specify um, essentially the, the mix mixture of how, as your users come in, uh, how many of one scenario you want versus another. So you could have a second scenario that's twice as likely as the first scenario, and it would just okay. pick a mixture of them. So this is a, a really basic test here. And now I still run it with the artillery uh, command line tool here. I just say artillery run. And I say web test dot yaml, and that should fire it off to run. So that warm up does that also do the same steps, or does it does just... the same steps? Okay. Yeah. Now you, we could have it use different steps. We could have a different scenario for the warm up uh, because the scenarios can be conditional, and I believe they can be conditional on the phases. Okay. I haven't got that deep into the the ability or capabilities of each of these things, but you can see it's uh, we're past the warm-up phase now. So it did the warm-up phase for 10 seconds. Now it's doing the, so, and I have an error here because it's giving me 404s. So I definitely have an error in my script. Is that the right URL for the privacy? I think the problem might be an extra uh, slash at the beginning there. Maybe. I think home privacy is correct. Try running that again. It looked like everything failed, actually. Oh, yes, 1300 404s. Mm -hmm. So it simulated quite a few users coming through and getting 404 pages on my site. This looks a little bit more promising. Lots of 200s here. Mm -hmm. So even within my warm up phase, it looks like it did a little better there. Okay, so things seem to be running okay. We're gonna let that run in the background here and we'll come back and add the next step to this. So uh, often what you actually want to do is try passing different variables in, like maybe different query parameters into your app. So this endpoint here happens to have a n parameter that I can pass in. So I'm gonna define a variable within my script uh, and have that passed into here. So what I'm gonna do is it's within the config section, we can define something called variables. I'm going to find a variable named n and give it a bunch of different values here. So, And then what artillery is going to do when it runs the script, it's every time it runs this, it's going to grab one, one of these values, I believe at random, or it might be sequentially that it runs through them. I'm not actually entirely sure, but it does go and uh, run through all, or just select a variable value from the variable that I've defined. So now when I run it, it should all run the same as before, but now that I'm passing in values that aren't one based on this thing that I'm testing, I should actually start seeing some 500s come through, which I am. See, so we hard coded a failing value in there. Uh, no, it's uh, this example happens to be. Oh, the, this is a you know, racing issue. Right. Yeah. Okay. When we have multiple threads running on the same. I'm trying to see if any 500s show up in the logs area. Anytime we see a 500 in here, it should be with a value that's greater than one. So one of the things I would have liked to see in this output, I don't see a way to get more of our both output out of here, is what were the values that were used when mm. I did get the five minutes, that kind of thing. Yeah, that'd be handy. Um, another interesting thing that uh, is that this is supposed to do is that I should be able to specify variables here at, as part of my command line. So I'm supposed to be able to do like this and then give it my values that I want it to use just by specifying like JSON in here, inline. Mm. But that happens to fail. It tells me that the variable definition is not valid JSON. Uh, this but feels like this. just maybe an escaping command line sort of thing. But the, the funny thing is if I even use their example, exactly their example, it also fails. So. Yeah. 
Yeah, there's probably some like USB I think it's something a. Or it knows. might be a Windows thing. Yeah, yeah, that would be my bet. I, so I don't know. Anytime I run into these, I end up just like putting slashes everywhere until something works. Mm-hmm. So I didn't get as far as to finding what worked, but I won't go into the details of everything, all the other options here, but some of the other interesting things. Um, so aside from, well, we can reference environment variables as we talked about. Um, there's also the ability to reference CSV files as your payload files. So instead of having things come in as the variables, which we hard coded into the uh, into our config, uh, we can actually just specify a, a, a CSV file and tell it which fields from the CSV file we're going to use. That's pretty cool. Like here, they have an example where they're doing a they're testing auth using usernames and passwords that are conveniently listed in a CSV file, which isn't where I would recommend saving those kinds of things. But <laughs> for the purposes of testing, that's pretty interesting. Yeah, and standard level of security, it'll be fine. Yeah. Um, we did we talked about the inline variables, uh, and then some of the other things that you can do. There's a scenario weighting that I also mentioned. So giving a higher weight into different scenarios that you've defined. And if you look at the reference for the HTTP engine, um, you can kind of see some of the other things that you can do. So you can pass in cookies if you need to, or configure how cookies are used. And there's also the ability to define conditional requests. And uh, the other thing that's interesting is doing request chaining where you're extracting values from the previous request in your flow which is pretty important when you get into testing more complex scenarios. So uh, lots of cool stuff in here. I've only really brushed on the surface, but um, certainly seems to be a very capable engine. Um, and I, I just like how, you know, it's something that's scripted and we could easily tie into a CI CD pipeline. Yeah, I like it a lot. Definitely something that I'm going to add to my toolbox. Cool. That's all I had for today. Great. Well, thank you, everybody, for watching. Remember to like, comment, share, uh, and send us an email request anytime you would like us to send you a high-resolution version of our logo that you can subsequently get tattooed on your bicep. We'll see everybody next week. Bye. Bye.